inspiration or whatever is everywhere, really. Because it's more about paint. Because sometimes my paintings kind of seem like time gone by or a memory. And so maybe that's the thing. There's a lot of displaced Midwesterners in San Francisco that when they would see my work, they'd say, oh, that looks like my grandpa's driveway or that looks like, you know, whatever. Just the oddity of someone from South Dakota as a painter, you know, on the national scene in San Francisco, what is this, you know? So that was kind of how he promoted me. You know, I live on a farm. Actually, I lived on an acreage. I didn't do chores, you know, but <laughs> kind of had a little hype there. I think that kind of helped me because it was like, who is this woman, you know? <laughs> so um, I think that helped. Well, I think it's just, uh, it's just the way I paint, but that is just almost like a, your signature. I mean, I paint fast and the paint ends up being quite thick in places. And I don't know if that's different or unique, maybe somewhat, but it's just innate. It's just part of me. I, you know, I couldn't change that if I wanted to. It always starts with driving around, walking around, we live on an acreage so I can walk around in our fields and start getting ideas like how I would put this together. I used to take slides and I used to have a little handheld viewer that was about <laughs> this big. And so I would look in there and paint. But when I first started, it was a little more about the image. I painted some still lifes and landscape. And over the years, it became more about paint, thick paint, uh, the push and pull of paint, everything more about the paint. The last show I had that was in Sioux Falls, the title of that show was Leaning on the Paint. And so it doesn't really have to be an image that inspires me. It's more like, I think, well, how could the paint, how could I use the paint to make an image? I have to cover all the white the first day. But once the painting gets on, and everything's covered. The painting sort of takes over, like my thick paint and how I want. I've always used oil paint, and I have a big stand-up easel. My paints are on a palette that's in front of me attached to the easel. I don't hold it. Yeah. When I paint, I have a paper towel in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. So I don't always have to rinse my brush. I just wipe it. And then I have a scraper for when I make mistakes, sometimes if it's wet, I can just wipe a lot off. If it's dry or getting tacky, then that's another problem. I even, you know, I sand, I can sand off the paint or chip it off or whatever. But if I make mistakes, I go back to the smooth undercoating and start again. One thing that really bugs me if I have a phantom bump where it shouldn't be, like it's, I should have wiped that off and not try and paint over it because when I'm scraping off or wiping off, I think, oh, here goes a week of work, you know, that's t wasted or, and then I always think, well, I have to tell myself, that I like the stress in my life. <laughs> my favorite part, of course, is putting the paint on for the very first time, because there's a lot of hope. <laughs> you know, I'm excited and it's like, oh, this is gonna be great, and then, of course, the end, if I do bring it to completion, then that's very satisfying. My paintings end up, you know, they have a lot of paint on them. It becomes a little bit automatic in what you reach for. And all these years, I put the paint globs in the same place. I know my white's up over in this corner. I mix my, my black because it's much richer and I can tone the black if I wanted a little more blue, a little more even green. Um, so I always mix my black and I have a basic blue, red, yellow, and green, and very large tubes of white. Even though oil paint dries slow, it still dries too fast for me. So I cut that palette in half that I have so it'll fit in my freezer. And so then I cover that with saran wrap and freeze it. And so I have fresh paint for quite a while. My paintings are a process. They are a practice. 
it's practice all the way up till the end when I think, oh, here's this part, this is done, this is good now. Because it's pretty spontaneous and it, it's all like, it's all practice till the end. So if I tell myself that, then it helps me. You know, you have to have that self-discipline and you're kind of by yourself. It, being a painter, you know, there are other careers in art that you wouldn't be that, you know, you could, you could teach, you could work, you know, do graphics and work with a team and all that. But painting uh, is kind of very individual. And so you have to have that motivation. And that's hard, it can be. I think it's just the satisfaction of it. Not that it's easy or joyful or anything. I, I guess I don't really associate joy with painting for me. It's, it's more satisfaction. Like if I can complete a painting to my satisfaction, which can be a long time. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I guess as a, a child, really, I always thought of myself as an artist because I took my sketchbook with me when we visited relatives. Oftentimes I had it. And so, then they would say, oh, here's the artist, you know, and that was so like, oh, you know, I'm an artist, you know. They called me an artist and I thought, well, that's what I am. I grew up, those first years were in Watertown and then Huron. And my grandparents, one set lived on a farm by Bradley, which was rolling hills and sloughs and wonderful for a kid. And the other farm was by Willow Lake, rural, nice. And I remember going to, my grandparents on both sides lived on farms, and so um, walking the fields and shelter belts and seeing the sloughs and the sunlight glinting off rocks and just deep shadows in the trees, I mean, I just was soaking in and I loved it. I couldn't get enough of looking, as a child. I mean, the ceiling lights in their farmhouse and the one house, you know, the kitchen light was a fluorescent, round, no shade. So that was, made the kitchen kind of bluish, you know? And then the dining room had a, had a incandescent, so that was yellow. And, you know, I can just remember those rooms having different light. So uh, it was just all very interesting to me. Yeah, well, that's the other thing that I had, I've had in my life since my childhood, because my dad's family is very musical and they would get together, come with the, you know, violin, guitars, uh, piano in the house, and so they did three-chord harmony. And so that's the music I like, actually. It's very simple music. I like Willie Nelson, um, Merle Haggard, <laughs> country music. So it's just, and some of it's really old music, and so it's just weird. It just seems to feed right into my art. In grade school, you know, I, I mean, I could draw pretty well, and so um, I know a few times they put my drawing in the case, the glass case in the hall, and so, you know, I'd go out for recess and I'd walk past that again. I didn't really want to look, <laughs> but, you know, I was so proud that there was my picture in the case, you know. It's important if kids, you know, have that ability and that, you know, it's recognized. And, and so that was an impetus for me to kind of keep going because I could do it. And, and I just kept drawing. I like to draw horses, a lot of horses and a lot of, and dogs and um, houses. In high school, I took all the art I could take. I didn't take any home ec. <laughs> I wanted to be in the art room, and that's where I hung out, and that was my, that was me. Actually, I did not see a painting until I came to SDSU. I didn't go to any galleries or, you know, but of course, just pictures. But yeah, that was my first experience was seeing the Harvey Dunn's. Uh, I remember distinctly. I had art history here in the auditorium, and so I came in here, and there was a big bench, and I know I just sat on the bench in the middle of the Harvey Dunn's, and, and I was like, oh, this is really something, you know? So 
Every time I went to art history class, I looked at the Harvey Dunn's. So I was kind of a, a figure in here every day. <laughs> Seeing just pictures in magazines and books, I didn't know that paint could be bumpy and thick. So that was a revelation to me. I just, I was shocked really at how thick the paint was and that you could build up layers and do that. I had no idea. So that was very interesting to me. It was just his technique because the landscapes, you know, are, I mean, prairie and, and that, which I like, but it was just more the technique of how thick the paint was. Of the Harvey Dunn's, um, I especially liked one that was um, a snow scene with really high drifts and people walking kind of all bundled up and, and how he did the snow, you know, and because I did winter ones and, and, you know, it's not just white or it's not just blue, it's all these colors in there. Well, I like them all. My favorite images is like, you know, some of his bright, sun-washed, endless prairie, and prairie is my garden, of course. I just absolutely loved art history because I knew nothing when I got in. <laughs> when I started, I'm like, I can't believe people are studying this, and this is just me, you know, so um, that was wonderful. You know, no matter how much you can do art yourself, natural talent or whatever, you know, you still need to study art, really. You need to develop your abilities. And so, what do they say? You don't know what you don't know or whatever. <laughs> then I came across painters that I really liked. Before that, I was painting kind of almost photorealistic, tiny little brushes. And in college, it changed dramatically because I had Signe Stewart for a teacher. And when I had her for painting three, she said, set a timer, use bigger brushes, and just don't, you know, throw them away when you're done if you don't like them. She, it just was, you know, such a freeing thing for me. I thought, oh, this is what I want to do, not this tiny little stuff. So that's, that changed dramatically. But since then, I haven't changed too much. When I got that down and how, you know, it just, it, that felt like me. That was what I wanted, how I wanted to work, so. Thank her for that. <laughs> you know, I finished my courses and graduated or whatever, and then I thought, now what? I saw a call for entries, national show that was starting in New York, and this is right after I graduated. So I, I sent two images for that, and they both got in the show, opened in New York, then went to St. Louis, and they had a closing reception in San Francisco. And so I went out to that. And John Pence said, um, we really like your work. If you could send out, you know, 15 more images and we, you know, the review committee would see if, you know. And I was like floored and I was so excited. And when he got them, he said, fine, and we'll start you out with a solo show. And now we need about 15 more. <laughs> so I had like 30 paintings in that first show. And I went out to the opening, you know, and it was like, wow. This was like a big city. Very fun, very rewarding. Joy there, that was joy. <laughs> well, one thing he did that really kind of helped me was he did a lot of group shows. So for those, I could have four or five, and that was always possible. And that was pretty much every year. Or, and then he would intersperse those with, he'd say, well, I think it's time for another solo show for you. He'd give me like two years though, but I was, I was kept very busy that way. And then I would get these cards in the mail, smiling face, send more, you know, I'm like, just at random, you know, so. I mean, looking back on my childhood, I, I think, what would I have thought if some artist came into the school or museum people and showed paintings and talked about art, you know, I would have been floored. I would just ate it up. So you never know what, what kid is sitting out there just waiting for this, really. Like, oh, this is me, you know. And even the other kids, just even if they're not so, so interested, but exposing them to art and color and uh, design, maybe things they haven't ever thought about or looked at, you know. And um, So I, I just think it's very important for their little minds to just broaden that way, you know, just, Make it interesting, make it, and just keep, 
keep with it, keep it in the back of your mind if that's, you know, what you want to do. And there's a lot of careers in art that, you know, would not just be painting for a gallery. Keep trying, um, practice a lot. You know, I would say just keep at it, keep trying.